What's going on everybody? It's Doc Picks by Tim. Sorry for the wait. I haven't been around much lately. I've been working seven days a week just trying to build up my cash. I don't have unlimited cash. So I've been taking advantage, just working as much extra days as possible so that I can continue to buy this fear, continue to buy these dips. Now in this video, I'm gonna look over Bitcoin. We're gonna look over at coin market cap to see things overall with crypto and just give you some spots to look for on the chart. Now, if you don't mind, hit the like, subscribe, ring the notification bell. I definitely appreciate it. It helps me out there a lot. And let's see what Bitcoin's been doing lately. Now, I've got a trend for you guys to watch out for. We have been in a nice little uptrend here, but we are now starting to consolidate. It looks like we may be ready to break this trend line very soon. But it is definitely in an uptrend as of late since it's hit that $17,000 area. And I've actually got a story for you guys that I think is quite relevant. So I've got a friend, right? And... I told him, hey, look, you know, Bitcoin's under 20,000. I think it's a great opportunity, man. You know, if you're long term on Bitcoin, it's time to add a little bit time to just continue to add, add on that fear. And what did he tell me? Oh, you know, the price looks pretty good, but I'm going to wait until 17. I want to wait until 17. Then I'll throw like two, 3000 in. And I, um, I basically said, you know, I think that's a mistake. I think you should just kind of somewhat dollar cost average. I would buy some now if it comes down more, maybe throw in another 400, 500, comes down even more, be ready. Don't just throw all your cash in at say 17,000. I would rather dollar cost average. And I also said there's that possibility that you miss that. You know, you might be busy at the time. Maybe you don't place a, a buy order. You know, maybe you're just like, literally you wanna see that price on your phone in front of you. And that's another thing is, you know, it doesn't hurt to place a buy order. If you're looking for a price target, maybe say you wanna see Bitcoin hit 15,000, you don't wanna miss it. Put that buy order in and just let it happen if it happens if not whatever but one thing you got to realize you know is just like during that bull run when people were calling for a hundred thousand calling for you know calling for things to double up after they've already been running so much just like that it's the same thing with the downside you get those people that are just calling for insane things calling for a five thousand dollar bitcoin you know calling for crazy things and is it possible for bitcoin to hit five thousand i don't think it will but of course, anything's possible. Some crazy regulation could come out tomorrow and it could just hamper the whole industry. You do have to be aware there is risk, of course. Do I think that will happen? No, I do not. Uh, where do I see the bottom at? Honestly, we might be looking at it right now. We might come and test 17,000. 15 might become our bottom. I don't know. Neither does anyone else. So that's one thing that you have to remember. No one knows exactly where Bitcoin's gonna go. Could this be the bottom? We might be already looking at it and we might be on our uptrend. I personally think we're going to test this trend. We're going to probably break from this trend level. I think we're going to test 20,000. If we break from there, we're definitely on our way to test the 18s, maybe test 17 again. That being said, is it a good buy right now? I do think so. Is it a good buy at 25,000? I do think so. Is it a good buy at 30,000? Yes, because long term, I do believe in Bitcoin long term. I believe that one day we will come to those all time highs and we will even break them. And for those of you that are extremely fearful, just know that this is how the cycles go. We get that bullish momentum, and then we get that year to two years of bearishness. Then we get another one to two years of bullish momentum, another one to you two, two years of bearishness. That's just the way it goes. We get a little bit of bullishness, a little bit of bearishness. This all plays into the halving. So if you know what the halving is, if you don't understand the halving and its effect on Bitcoin's price, supply and demand economics, I highly recommend you look into what the halving is. I have gone into it in previous videos, but it's a very simple mechanic built in Bitcoin where every four years, the difficulty to mine basically gets double. So if you're a miner mining 10 Bitcoin a day, once that next halving comes through, if you're not expanding, um, then you're going to basically be mining five Bitcoin per day. There are, of course, other factors such as competition, you know, that will change the hash rate. But in general, your difficulty level is basically doubling. So if you're mining 10, you're going to get five now after the halving. So what does this do to the price? Well, as long as that supply goes down and that demand stays the same, then yes, the price is obviously going to climb. And this has happened every halving and even a little bit of hype coming up to the halving, knowing what typically happens. So that's one thing I highly recommend you look into. If you are fearful of Bitcoin, if you are, you know, even considering selling at this price, if you're considering on a little run up selling, I wouldn't do it. It's not worth it to me. I'm not your financial advisor, but I personally, I'm not selling Bitcoin. I'm just solely a buyer, especially at these prices. I see no reason to sell. All right, guys. Now, another thing I wanted to show you here is this is the total hash rate. And this is basically what miners are doing on the Bitcoin network. You'll see that the hash rate continues to increase. Although recently in June, it has been downtrending, but it does seem like it's hitting a base starting to turn around. We'll see where it goes. You can also pull up the 30 day average or just the raw values where it definitely looks a little more volatile. 
So this is the average here. But you will see that we are in a general uptrend. It does look like it kind of broke this trend. Now one thing to consider is during this, during these hard times, very likely a lot of miners can't afford to expand. And it's very likely that miners can't dilute because their current stock prices, it just would look horrible for the company and it would be very detrimental to dilute at these at prices for any any stock. I'm talking CleanSpark, Riot, anybody, doesn't matter. They are all definitely beaten down in price and to dilute now definitely in my opinion would not be the right decision. So one thing to think about, um, you know, over the next potential year, maybe even two years is it might be hard for miners to continue to grow. So this total hash rate might stagnate a bit. But when you look on the long term, we have been on a nice trend upwards and it, I expect this will continue higher. Sure, there are some macro environmental fears. And of course, the macro environment can have this fluctuate quite a bit. However, over the long term, this will continue to go up to the right. And that is what I believe. And as a side note, guys, mining hash rate is a key security metric, just so you know and the more hashing power on the network, basically the greater the security. Because by having more computers on the network, it is even more decentralized. The more expansion we see with Bitcoin, the better, the more decentralized it is, and that is a good thing. And I also did wanna show you guys CMC or coin market cap, and you'll see that in the last 24 hours, things have been rising pretty nicely. Now, don't let that keep you from buying, okay? Don't let that keep you from buying, because if you look over the last week, a lot of things are still considerably down Although if you are up, you see Solana is actually up 21% on the week. Um, Polkadot's up a bit. I still think Polkadot's extremely cheap, in my opinion. Polygon, I think, is a steal. Crowcoin, I think, is a steal right now. VeChain's another one you shouldn't sleep on. If you're a fan of the gaming cryptos, Decentraland is under a dollar. I'm avoiding it, but that might be a deal. Axie Infinity has fallen quite hard from 100 and something. I personally wouldn't touch it. And one of my all-time favorites, Voyager Token, actually down 13% in the last seven days. I think this is an absolute steal. It is high risk though, because regulatories are definitely breathing down Voyager's back. However, I do believe in the executive team, and uh, these guys are from E-Trade. They're actually planning on eventually having stocks supported on Voyager. Um, of course, individual wallets, NFT support. There are definitely many reasons to be bullish on VGX, and I will be giving you guys a dedicated Voyager video very soon. Also going over the stock, V-O-Y-G or V-Y-G-V-F, very soon. Uh, but let me know down below in the comments, any cryptos that are sticking out to you? What have you guys been picking up lately? Let me know down below. But that's all I got for you today, guys. Just remember to stay calm, stay the course, and if you believe in the long term, it is clearly the time to buy. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Take it easy as always. We'll see you next time.